Hey, it's your man, Bonte, three for successful convicts. And I know I usually make videos for the ex-convicts, ex-felons, whatever you want to call them, XXX. But this one is for the family, friends, and loved ones of those people. I'm going to tell you how you can help them succeed in life. Just stick around. So, in the meantime, I need you to hit that like button, punch that subscribe, and put a chokehold on the keyboard and make a comment. Welcome back. As I said before, I'm your host, Bonte 3 for Successful Convicts, and I'm talking to you who have loved ones, friends, families, significant others, yada, yada, yada. Or if you're just a caring individual and you want to connect with somebody on the inside so that you can befriend them and help them out, I'm going to tell you how you can help them out. Now, I want you to go into a deep state of mind. I want you to imagine something. Now imagine you're a hardworking individual, taxpayer, you don't do anything illegal that you know of because, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do that can become illegal or be illegal and we have no no, but no knowledge of it. But ignorance of the law is not an excuse and you will go to prison if the crime is that deep. But I want you to think about you giving a coworker a ride home, right? Just friendly ride. Oh, my, my car broke down, you know, yada, yada. Oh, I can give you a ride. Boom. You give me your coworker a ride. You blow through a yellow light. Boom. The police, whew, lights come on. Now, just randomly police ask you to step out of the car. They want to search your car. Now, you're a hardworking individual. You're not about to put up uh, resistance because you know in your mind like this is kind of extreme but whatever you get out of your car you're like I ain't doing nothing police search your car finds some drugs on the passenger side under the seat or in the little door now long story short you know you is not yours you fighting boom you go to jail you go to the county you making calls you know what I'm saying and because your coworker was like, hmm, this ain't my car. I was just getting a ride. Now, you know that if anything, it had to be your coworkers or the police plan or whatever. Now, long story short, you go to prison for it. We ain't going to get into all the justice system, the wrong. But you're an innocent person in prison. Now, I know, yeah, everybody's in prison innocent. But this situation this scenario is you and you really are innocent and you really went to prison. We are not going to get into how much time or none of that. The whole fact of the matter is anything can happen to anybody at any given time. So that person that you know, your loved one, yada, 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 that's in prison, they need things. They need human things. Now, I know you think prison is a place where re rehabilitation happens. It doesn't. It does if you apply yourself to rehabilitate yourself. There's programs, there's books, there's this, there's that, but not really a lot of stuff that's actually geared toward helping a person coming out and being successful. That's where you come in. That's where I come in at. Now, what do these people need? First thing they need is communication. Communication is key. Without communication, that person may start to drift off into that nobody cares about me and F the world. It's just me against the world and I don't care. And that just leads in a snowball effect in the wrong direction. And we don't want that. Communicate with them. Write them. I don't know how many times I've seen people face light up when they get a letter in the mail, when they see that return address, who it's from or whatever. That's critical. That is critical even like myself, I can remember pretty much all the people that wrote me when I was locked up. Not that it wasn't a lot, but you remember those letters. You remember those visits, which is another thing. Visits. If you can, go visit the person. Even if you just visit a person once. I've had numerous people visit me one time, and I remembered it. My whole 10 years down, well, 9 years, 11 months, but I remembered it. 
and it stuck in my brain. And I always remember that, hey, they took the time out of their schedule, out of their day to come down to the prison to visit me. And regardless of the relationship we had prior to that, that meant a lot to me. And for those people that visited me, I know who they are and I keep that in mind. And it just makes the relationship take to a whole nother level, so to speak. And nowadays, they make it so easy to communicate with prisoners, inmates, or whatever you want to call them. It makes it so easy because they have email services. They have text services. You know, the phone calls, of course. But the thing about the phone calls, they're usually held by private companies that charge large and high amounts of money so that they can milk the prisoners and their families and stuff like that. But that's another story, another video. It's easy ways to communicate with these people. And then the good old fashioned handwrite a letter. You know what I'm saying? It don't got to be intricate. It don't got to be long. It's the thought that counts. And that really applies when you're locked up. Because when you get that mail, you think about that person took that time out to write you that letter. Communication. They need communication. Another thing that is needed that is very, very, very important it's kind of along the lines of communication, but it's information. They need information. Man, when you're in prison, it's information that's been there. That information, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, word of mouth, whether it's an article in a newspaper, whether it's a written up statement that somebody typed up or somebody got printed off and sent in, a lot of the information is old and outdated. But when you're in there, you don't know what's going on because you're kind of like taken out of the cycle of life, so to speak. Yeah, you watch TVs, but TV is only what? So much of real mixed with a lot of fluff. You know what I mean? Whether it be the news, because the news is going to show you what they want you to see. The music videos. And a lot of information that you try to get, they won't even send into prisons. I remember I used to always write different companies and different stuff that you see in the magazines. You know how they always say, inquire about this product or whatever, write such and such. But when they see a prison address, they don't even send the information. It's almost like they write you off as a customer. Like, uh, that person's locked up. They can't be a customer. So what I used to always do is ask my people, write this place Get this information, and when they send it to you, send it to me. That was real vital because that's how you stay up on current events. That's how you formulate your plan for what you're going to do when you get out. Because it's a lot of times people, I remember, let me tell you the story right quick. This dude, name was Slim. He had been locked up, I don't know, maybe upwards of like 20 years. So Slim was still stuck when he was out. He used to read the newspaper. And he used to look at cars for sale. And he used to be like, man, this car cheap, man. I think, I think I'm going to send the money because he worked in Unicor. That's uh, the prison industry. He's like, I think I'm going to send my sister the money to get this car. And it was like cars, like 77 uh, Novas and just old cars that like, hey, Slim, that car is probably not even worth it if it's for that price. Yo, you think so? But he was still stuck. Because of the lack of information to keep him up on the current events. He would have knew that those cars, you might not even find parts for them no more. You know what I'm saying? So when people formulate and they plan about what they're going to do when they get out, a lot of times their plans get threw off because the automation that comes up. You know, now they have, you know, artificial intelligence. They have computers, you know, people working from home and stuff like that. So they need information on this type of stuff. And they need information via books. And a lot of places, you can't get books sent directly from a person. So you will have to go to a bookstore and have them send it in. So it can come from a publisher or a bookstore or whatever. Magazines. If you want to send them magazines, send them useful magazines. Now, I'm not going to knock, you know, the uh, Maxims and the, you know, the, the hip hop magazines and stuff like that. But that's entertainment. Unless they're the type of person that can see through a lot of the stuff and see more than what actually is face front value, 
then yeah, but a lot of people, they get wrapped up in those magazines and they reading the hip hop gossip and you know, that's the topic of the day in the TV room. And it's like, man, if you really love your people, you want to have them elevate above that. Send them how to books. Send them, uh, uh, <clears throat> let me tell you something. I don't suggest those for dummy books because the for dummy books is cool and the titles, catchy titles. But a lot of times those for dummy books have too much information. And when, after you get through reading them, you're still a dummy because they talk, they told you so much stuff that you don't even really need to know. Like, for instance, uh, how to drive for dummies. They're going to tell you, you know, walk to the car, look for the key that goes in the door. And, you know, it's going to tell you instead of just saying, hey, go get in the car, turn the key, which, you know, the average person are not that much of a dummy that they don't know nothing. But get them information. They ask for information. Cool. If they don't send them information on different stuff different stuff that's happening out here as far as job wise, like industries that like, for instance, CDLs, send them the CDL uh, test booklet so they can start studying for it. Send them, you know, on how to start uh, a freight broker in business. You know, it's all kind of packages and, and, and information that can be sent into the prisons that a person can use and start studying and get their plan and formulate what they're going to do for the rest of their life. Reflection is the business of man. What does that mean? People need to reflect. Send them pictures. Send them pictures. You know, they want to see what's going on. You know what I mean? They If they missed the holiday, send them a picture of the Christmas tree. Send them a picture of the food that you had at Thanksgiving. Send them a picture of the house. Send them a picture of the dog. Send them a picture of go on the block and just take a picture of the block. Send them a picture of the block. Send them a picture of some new cars. Send them a picture of girls. Send them a picture of men, you know, at the gym, you know, of course, with people permission. But people just want to see stuff. They want to see stuff outside of what they're seeing already. Because when you're in the prison, it's like you're in that frame of, you're in that circle. You know what I mean? You see everything every day. It's the same thing. The face has changed, but it's the same thing. You want to see stuff outside. I mean, you know, for you artsy people, take a picture of the sunrise. Take a picture of the full moon. Take a picture of a plane flying. You know, you'd be surprised where that picture is as lame or crazy as it may seem, where that picture might take a person. And of course, read the prison manual on what pictures can and cannot be sent in there for you ladies or for you men who want to send pictures to your significant other. But pictures, like they say, a picture paints a thousand words. That's so true. Now, this is where it really gets technical. You really want to help them? Starve them out in life. So that way, when they get out, they'll halfway be decent. What do I mean by that? Start them a bank account. It ain't got to be nothing extravagant. But just get their information, start them a bank account that... By the time they get out, it could be a little seasoned because it already already have been in place. And, you know, you can make weekly, depo weekly deposits of like $10, $20, hey, even $5 or whatever. But just to get them started on a track, you know what I mean? And they complain like, hey, send me some money. I already sent you some money. But you'll get it when you get out. That's the type of stuff they need to get on track. A bank account. That way they already have it and it already be set up and they can start building their credit. And it's a good thing if you have good credit, you can add them as an authorized user on your account. But please don't add them if you have late payments or if you, you know, you got bad stuff on your credit. If you got A1 credit, add them as an uh, authorized user. That way, by the time they get out, their credit to be a little seasoned and then it'll make their walk in life a lot easier. And on top of that, it'll make it easier for them to go on their own and they won't need you as much because it's a lot of things you can do before they get here to help them out. So when they get here, boom, they can take off running and fly. You know what I mean? Another thing that they're going to need housing. Yes. Housing, a place to stay. I didn't even realize because luckily for me, I had family, which I didn't even have to go out and look for an apartment and all that type of stuff and 
you know, go through the half. I didn't even get the halfway house because I got immediately released when they changed the crack laws. But housing is very, very important. And it's very, very hard for people with records to get now. Now they're starting to see that people have records. And some places don't rent to ex-felons. And that's just crazy. A lot of times you got to go to a landlord that's willing to deal with you. And the fact that you got a record, he might even want more for rent from you because they look at you as a risk. I know it's crazy, but keep that in mind. Try to have housing in place for them so that make that transition a lot easier because when they get out and <clears throat> you got the system on their back because the system is gonna require you to do certain things and you trying to do certain things, you trying to do what you wanna do, you trying to do you know, what they want you to do and sometimes it conflict and it's hard and it gets frustrating and a lot of times, it leads people down the easy road, which is the wrong road, because it's easier to do wrong than it is to do right. And we know what comes next after housing, transportation. Now, I don't care if you get the person a car, if you loan a person your car, or if you get a person a bus pass. That's good. Believe it or not, when I got out, I had to catch the bus to a lot of places. I didn't have a vehicle because you got to think when you get out, a lot of people after doing a long stint of time, don't even have a driver's license. Whether your license was suspended, whether your license just expired, or whether you never had a license. But if you're doing years, you're gonna need a driver's license. And I wouldn't suggest letting the person, well, most of the time, a person is not gonna get behind the wheel if they don't have a driver's license just getting out because they know the consequences. But help them get in play even by just giving them a bus pass because that unlimited bus pass comes in the clutch when you got to go to job interviews, you got to go see a parole or supervised release officer, you got to go here, you know, and you got to go there, you got to go see this, this person for this program and you got to go a lot of places. Money is already, you know, a factor, you know, whether you got it or whether you don't, but you're going to need money because you got to keep paying the bus, but getting hit with a bus pass even though it's programs that give you a bus pass, but get them the bus pass or whatever transportation they need so they can get to that program and start getting the freebies. And one of the most important things that a person need, time. Now they just got out from doing time. They've come to realize the value of time. They just need a little time before the demand start coming. You know, if, it, if you're in a relationship with this person or this person is your little brother or older brother, little sister, older sister, auntie, uh, grandma, whatever, they just need a little time to adjust because it's like taking something out the freezer and letting it thaw. They need time to accommodate to the surroundings, see what's going on, especially if they've been gone a long time. Then you got to give them a pass as far as, you know, catching up on stuff. You know, people getting out, they don't know how to work a, a smartphone. They don't know how to work the remote. They don't know how to work a computer. That's that time they need. They need time to adjust. They ain't need it from you because a lot of times people, when you do be there for them, they appreciate that. And they don't want to let you down. So they wind up compromising a lot. And it takes a lot of humiliation and patience for you to deal with this new thing because you've been wanting to get out and now you're out. <clears throat> a lot of times you get out, it's a little scary because you don't want to fail yourself and you don't want to fail the people that stand behind you. If you got people, hopefully you do. But, you know, those are just a few things that you can do to help people that's coming home or should be coming home soon or even later. Just something to keep in mind that you can help them and help they transition back into the world a lot better and a lot easier. Hey, if you ain't already done it, make sure you hit the like. Or, hey, even if you don't like this video, hit the dislike. I need to know. I need to know the content that you want to see, that you want to hear about. Also, if you ain't already done it, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel because I'm trying to take this movement and help people who come out to be successful because that's what it's all about. You want to see them successful. I want to see them successful. 
because that's what it's about, being successful. Successful convicts is about helping the people who've been on the inside come on the outside and flourish.